first we can, we'll start with John. John is an experienced mining executive and geologist of more than 40 years in the uranium industry experience. He spent 17 years at the start of his career as a senior geologist and the manager of Australia's activities for uranium, uh, for German uranium miner, Uranez. In 93, as the Uranez withdrew from Australia, John founded Paddleton Energy Limited. Building, his, building the company from junior explorer to multi-mine uranium producer and a global asset base of the valuation of more than five billion at its peak, he oversaw the successful large market transaction, including acquisitions of major capital raisings before leaving Paladin in 2015. John was appointed Managing Director of Deep Yellow in October 2016. John is a member of the Uranium Forum within the, uh, within the Minerals Council of Australia, of which he is a former board member and sits on the Council of the Namibian Chamber of Mines. Thank you, John. Thank you, Fraser. I've just realised that I forgot my notes, uh, what I was going to talk about, so I'm going to wing it a bit, and uh, which should be interesting. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Pay Dirt organisation for what it's done uh, in this sort of time of global isolation and, and uh, trying to keep keep everything going and uh, I think we should thank the intrepid Bill Rippard and his organisation and his staff and I think uh, the good thing about this is uh, it keeps up the communication between Africa and Australia and history will show uh, that 2020 was no different than any other year in the terms of the ADU holding uh, its conference. So with that said, um, as Fraser indicated, I'm, I'm in the uranium business for quite some time and, uh, and I've been a bull and people wonder why and they wondered why when I was with Paladin and I like them thinking why now that in a, we're in a uranium downturn and um, as you'll see, uh, the... Um, it's really a, a time of opportunity that I'm looking at and I'm not really sort of hurrying to see uranium prices increase in the next year or so. The, the whole issue about uranium, which I think should fascinate anybody that's interested in the energy market, is that in a world that's uh, starved of electricity, in a world that uh, has taken its issue with global warming, and in a world that tries to uh, aspire to zero emissions, and in a world that's oversold on renewables, uh, where you do uh, need something to partner that, that you can have uh, energy safely, consistently, on a sustainable basis. And, and the world is starting to realise that uh, with fossil fuels disappearing, which they'll, they'll start going down in need about 2050. The, you know, the fossil fuels will still still grow. I think there's somebody I read there's 400 coal-fired power reactors being built uh, in the next year, year or so, 300 of which are in, in, in China. So the commodity is there. There's, there's a whole host of uh, aspects that... Um, uh, uh, affecting the uranium outlook. Demand is there and growing uh, with all sorts of uh, countries taking on a, uh, on a good position. So I haven't got enough time to talk about those dynamics, um, but I, I really would like to give some uh, little insights with, uh, if I can work this thing. Just with this, I've shown this a couple of times actually, and I think it's really important for people to understand that uh, uranium is a 75, or nuclear is a 75 year uh, sort of history. It's a baby in amongst most of the other commodities. Um, it's been inspired by the military sort of introduction in the sort of 45 to the sort of mid, mid 60s, uh, and that's where it took on um, uh, mainly a government uh, or, uh, sort of 
sponsored mining and, and all that uh, secretive stuff that went on at the time. And uh, toward the tail end in 65, there started to be some nuclear reactors coming into the business. Uh, the cy second cycle was the uh, civilian-inspired global sort of, on a global scale, which was, you know, the uh, f uh, electricity from nuclear and, and that, that real desire to, uh, to get uh, off the oil dependency. And, and then uh, the, the last cycle, which was the, is currently, uh, which is the revival by China. And this is yet to play out. Over this year, this period, there's been uh, 8.1 billion pounds of uranium has been um, produced, and some of that in those cycles has been an overproduction, and that overproduction has, uh, has uh, been the result of uh, sort of uranium price. So here we are. That's the uranium price. There was no, there was no commercial price for uranium uh, before the mid, uh, or about 60, 1968. It was, a, it was a secret squirrel business of the, of the governments, how they sort of uh, transacted on that. And, uh, and then we had the, the boom. And that's got a lot in it. We could talk an hour just on that, on that um, uh, slide alone. But the, oil, the Cold War, the oil shock at the bottom, Chernobyl in 85, which decimated expertise, and then Fukushima, which then really polished off and uh, reduced 400 companies to about 50 uranium companies worldwide today, excluding the majors. So the interesting part here is that we're in the beginnings of a, a uranium boom, when that's going to happen. It's sort of post-2020 sometime. Um, the, the, the really interesting thing to know, in all of this time, in all of that production, you'll see that one, two, three in green up there. They're the only small cap companies that ever produced uranium. And all the rest were majors, governments, and all of that. So, so the uh, Denison in uh, 1955, Queensland Mines in Northern Australia in, uh, in about the late, eight, uh, in the sort of the 80s, and, um, and Paladin uh, in, the, um, in this uh, last period. So of the hundreds and hundreds of ones that were saying they were going to produce, so it's a funny metal. It's got issues of how to uh, how this gets into a mining operation. There's all sorts of inter people interested in it, and it and it does sort of uh, uh, require the best performance in all areas of activity in in, in mining and sales. I just uh, put a cartoon up here to just get, make it more Africa centric, and and this here is the the sort of uranium status in a very cartoony style of um, Namibia having two, two uh, operating mines, one mothballed, which is the old Langer Heinrich, and potential for several others. The, um, and th those ones that are in green here uh, are ones with existing production, existing mines, uh, and uh, in the modern era. Those ones in, uh, in blue are historic mines in the old Belgian Congo, which is now DCR and Gabon, and uh, where mining started back in the sort of late 40s. And then there's the potential where there's resources shown in that whatever colour that is, yellowy mustard, and, uh, and I'm not saying that other, other potential doesn't exist there, but that's where resources uh, tend to exist. So Namibia is where we operate, uh, as I say, South Africa is a byproduct uh, coming out of its gold mines. Niger, two operating mines, one about to shut down, s several new new projects. Malawi, Malawi, which is the other one where we built it, is a mothball project. And potential in all those other countries. So it's, it's appropriate here to, to talk about Africa uranium and, uh, and with that, in the six minutes I've got, I'll talk about uh, Deep yellow. So we regard ourselves as a differentiated uh, company with a unique growth strategy, and and I'll explain why, what I mean by differentiated on on it's on several fronts. Um, we're on a counter cyclical uh, uh, growth strategy. Uh, last 12 months, we've expanded our resources in uh, on our 
main uh, reptile 100 per cent owned project in Namibia. We're just about to complete a, 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 a PFS um, in the next uh, sort of the closing months of uh, 2020. Uh, with the Japanese, we've got a joint venture who have just completed spending 4.5 million on an adjacent property, and we've made a major discovery there uh, with a great intersection which we think has got potential for Rossing, um, sort of uh, a HUSAB type basement type targets. We're targeting MA activity, and that's continuing, and we've identified advanced opportunities, and we've got a good, strong uh, uh, cash position. So the key ingredients still remain for the execution of our dual strategy, which is growing, identifying and growing out organic and taking opportunity to uh, uh, get other projects that for inorganic growth that we believe we can optimise and really bring them in and make a, uh, a, a pipeline of projects in, in the company. The industry is an extended downturn fundamental supply demand disconnect, majors are getting like Rio is getting out. This is causing an interesting vacuum and the sector consolidation is essential. So Namibia, it's a great jurisdiction. It's been producing uh, since, the, um, since the 90s or uh, even 80s and it's never lost a beat. Uh, it's, a, it's a one billion, uh, over one billion uh, of uh, resources in, in that country, uh, in measured and indicated. Um, it's produced 350 million pounds, ne as I say, never any uh, political problems, and, and it's the fourth largest jurisdiction, very supportive uh, infrastructure, and without sacrificing environment or sustainability issues. The our tumus deposit is uh, in the, you see on the bottom uh, picture there, uh, uh, in that sort of beige colour, um, uh, is our 100% project. The, tu the, cent the tumus project uh, uh, um, deposit is in the middle there shown, and the top picture is of the tumus itself. There's an overall resource in the central, it's, it's a whole string of deposits. Uh, over many, many kilometres, and, and this is just the, the part that we're concentrating our fee pre-feasibility study. There's 24 million uh, pounds of indicated resource in that red block on the top, and 12 million uh, associated uh, around it with inferred. Total measured over the whole uh, uh, channel, which is an incredibly fertile 120 kilometre uh, channel that we identified three years ago, uh, and it's consistent and it's just breeding uranium um, and the and over the parts we've tested which is about 60 kilometers of the 125 kilometers there's about 77 million pounds of measured indicated in reserve and we think we're going to get to uh, um, about 100 million plus uh, pounds there our pfs as i say is highly encouraging we reported we're looking at a the the first stamp of the uh, production is there on that tumor uh, three, as you see it there, and um, and the and it's uh, the parameters are 20 years low low lowish cost um, annual production three to f uh, two and a half to three million. It's like Langer Heinrich is absolutely right up our alley, and uh, and I'm, I'm I'm pleased that we've uh, we're gonna, you know sort of the results are equal and in parts better than what we've got there. So that should be out towards the end of this year. The other thing is this uh, Nova Joint Venture, which is an adjacent uh, property, immediately adjacent to our 100% owned properties. And we have found a target in, the, in a sort of a, in the bottom end of a, uh, a domal sort of structure, uh, which fits in uh, geologically with uh, HUSAB and uh, and um, Rossing, and also the 45 million tonnes of, uh, of basement type uh, mineralisation which we've got on our property, which we haven't worked on at all in the last three years. And we're very encouraged, uh, the joint venture has now, uh, the Japanese have earned in their, their uh, rights. We have, um, uh, we're going to participate uh, jointly in the three parties ourselves, Jog, Meg and Toro, will be contributed to Ford programs, which we'll announce. So the multi, uh, 
sort of project global uranium platform. It's unique, as I say, it's right timing. It's, uh, it's got a standout team that were the only one that delivered in the, in the pre-Fukushima period and got a, uh, new operations going and, uh, and we're well funded. The building blocks for that strategy are around the cohesive team that's operated together and the markets, the utilities believe this group can deliver product in a sustainable basis. Uh, we have that proven track record. We've got the vision and leadership to achieve that, uh, that dual strategy which is in those uh, grey blocks and, um, and we have funding support. The uniqueness is, is that we're not just looking at a narrow gauge railway track on one project, but we're going to offer our customers optionality, future production, and, uh, and we can uh, have a pipeline that has production potential out to 2030 to 40. So concluding, we're energised, well funded, the outlook for uranium is positive, we're well positioned to ex execute our dual strategy, and we've got a, it's well defined in terms of what we want to do. We think we may get something done late this year. Uh, we're in a strong position, and yellow cake, uh, yellow, deep yellow, as they provide, aims to provide security and certainty of uranium supply in a growing market where there's not much apparency of that uh, happening with the majors uh, sort of pulling out. Thank you.